I'd like to call this meeting to order. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Take roll. Uh, we're starting this month because we're in a new month with Ward 3. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Pro Tem. Graham. Here. Polumsky. Here. York. Here. Toledo. Absent. Healy. Here. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Here. Conquest. Here. Wagner. Here. Mulliner. Here. Goiter. Here. Sampatino. Here. Leader. Here. Done. Here. 13 <coughs> present, one absent. 13 present, one absent. We have a quorum. Uh, next is written communication from the public. Do we have anything that's written communication from the public? If so, could you present it to the clerk? <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Seeing no more, uh, we'll move on to public forum. Public forum is an opportunity for the public to speak uh, before the council. Uh, you each have three minutes to speak. Uh, we'll start the timer when the, you'd mention your name. Uh, City Clerk, do we have anybody signed up for public forum? We have one, Michael Cremery. Michael Crumery, 570 West Crockett. And just for a visual effect, this is what a dictionary looks like in case anyone watching the video might need to find one. Summertime again. And unfortunately, the Elmhurst Independent has made yet another incorrect statement regarding stormwater management. Incorrect attendance from the viewpoint page back in July 2015, and now June 2016, Ignorance of the definition of some basic words. Allow me to read from the June 30th viewpoint, page eight. Quote, thank you to the faithful but unidentified reader who pointed out that we've been publishing an error in almost every story that has to do with stormwater management. The independent has referred to, quote, detention ponds rather than, quote, retention ponds. As the reader pointed out, the water is being retained in the ponds. It is not being held at, held after school. Good catch. Consider it caught and corrected. Does the editorial staff of the Elmhurst Independent not own a dictionary or not know how to use the internet to navigate to dictionary.com? Detain, a verb, to keep from proceeding, to delay, to hold back, for a temporary time. Retain, to keep possession of, to continue to use, to continue to hold or have. Pond, a noun, body of water smaller than a lake. Use of the word pond is obviously also incorrect. Simply stated, overland flooding will detain, will be detained in the lower graded area for a temporary time. If the Elmhurst Independent does not want to use the correct definitions of words, then they should simply tell residents, affected residents, to stop complaining. Oh wait, the Elmhurst Independent already did that back in July 2015. Thank you. That's all who signed in tonight. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak mm -hmm. before the City Council? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements. Are there any announcements? By the council. Alderman York. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, Friday, July 22nd is the fourth annual Elmhurst Cycling Classic. Uh, details can be found at elmhurstcyclingclassic.com. And we're looking forward to an exciting day of bike racing, and we need volunteers. So um, there are volu there's a place for volunteers to sign up and help put on this great community event. And the second announcement I have is uh, effective July 1st. The president-elect, um, Dr. Troy Van Aken, um, took the position at Elmhurst College. He actually started. He'll be inaugurated in October, and we'll get him here to a city council meeting to have him meet everybody. But he's on the job, and um, 
um, taking over for Dr. Lori Braskamp, who served valiantly for a year and a half um, during our transition. So we welcome uh, Dr. Troy Van Aken and his family to town. They're moved into the president's home on uh, Cottage Hill in St. Charles, and should be an exciting time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there anything that anyone would like to have removed from the consent agenda or would like to vote no on? Seeing none, uh, I need a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Alderman York, second by Alderman Levin. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Graham. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Deludo, absent. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Lundquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Zoider. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That consent agenda passes. On to committee reports. Uh, the first committee report, could you read the title? It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that an overlay SSA for special increased beautification and maintenance services in the Central Business District be established. Signed by Kevin L. York, Chairman, Bob Dunn, Vice Chairman, Noel Toledo, and Mark P. Sabatino. I need a motion to place this on the floor. Alderman York, a second. Alderman Dunn. Alderman York, your committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the report is, is pretty self-explanatory, but to um, <laughs> just kind of um, lay it out there, a couple of years ago, um, SSA number seven expired, which was um, an SSA for the residential, the residential portions of the Central Business District. And it, it uh, was a sunset um, SSA. And since that time, um, there has not been uh, one in, in the Central Business District, and as um, part of our agreement with um, uh, Morningside, we, um, of course, took action on um, petitioning the court to remove the residential portion of that project from um, SSA number six. And along those same lines, um, the committee took it, uh, took the responsibility of looking at um, whether a, a replacement SSA um, should be um, recommended um, to replace the one that had expired. So um, we, we did a lot of work on it. Um, you can read all the, the details. Um, but um, at the end of the day, um, I think the committee, well, obviously the committee uh, fully agreed that um, establishment of a new SSA at this time um, probably, um, well, definitely was not um, in, in the plans. And the basic reasons, we all kind of had our reasons, and I'm sure some of the other committees will probably speak. But as um, the downtown kind of redevelops, there's been um, increased, uh, a lot of increased EAV in the residential portions of the downtown area. And the end result of that would be that um, if a new SSA were created, um, that the residential properties would pay a majority of the, um, of the SSA tax for those increased um, services and enhance, enhanced and increased services. So, um, from that perspective, um, that just didn't make a lot of sense um, to, the, to myself for sure and the committee um, also. Um, so what, we, what we've done is we've made a recommendation tonight that we do not um, establish a new SSA, um, but a very important part of the report also is the fact that um, we're going to bring um, the whole um, city, center, city center central business district funding equation into our committee and take a look at it. Um, there was revenue lost for downtown services for these increased um, and special services. And um, everybody knows that um, city center and the central business district is, is, is just so important to the economics of, of Elmhurst that we need to support them and make sure that we continue. We, we've invested millions of dollars over the past uh, 20, the almost 30 years now with the extension, um, that we need to maintain this investment and we're going to look at every detail in doing that and making sure that um, we work collaboratively and, and come up with an equitable situation to make sure that the downtown continues to look good 
um, and, and maintains a great appearance and uh, will draw people in and continue the um, increasing tax base and the increasing EAVs down there. So um, that in a nutshell is kind of a summary of the report. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? Alderman Dunn? Just a few comments to follow up uh, some of the things that uh, Chairman York pointed out. Um, the establishment of a new SSA definitely had merit uh, because uh, we ended up discussing it at length for uh, three, four meetings. And uh, uh, so there was definitely interest on the committee's part to, to, uh, to examine this way to fund some of those special services uh, particularly beautification and maintenance eff efforts for the downtown. Uh, the SSA 6 that was mentioned is more for the marketing and promotion downtown, and, and it's a much larger portion of the city center budget. Uh, but over the last few years, with the expiration of the SSA 7, which was targeted at the beautification and maintenance, the, the fund balance for city center has went from being reasonably healthy to uh, basically down to close, close to zero. Um, so their, their budget's cut and we do need to support them going forward as Alderman York mentioned. Uh, I think the fact that um, SSA 6 is purely commercial and we were looking at scenarios to try to pull in residential into a special service area and when we saw the percentages where the SSA, uh, the new SSA would have potentially even 55 percent of the EAV be residential, uh, that didn't sit well with some of the committee members. Uh, however, I do feel on the other hand that because the residential is becoming such a large constituent or presence in the downtown, uh, it, it probably will make sense at some point as, as our downtown evolves to, to really look at this again uh, because right now the residential portions are, are, are not funding any of the, the special services in the downtown and uh, that we felt there might be some valid reasons why, why they should, um, but uh, really in the end, I decided to support not moving forward with the SSA because I think right now the administrative and legal hurdles uh, that, that we'd be going through um, would, be, uh, would be difficult at this point. So th that was the reason that I, I support it. Um, this not moving forward with this overlay concept. Uh, how, however, I think in the future it might, might be worth another look. Um, certainly the downtown benefits all of Elmhurst. We've heard that in uh, um, last night. I, I went with a group on top of our new parking garage to watch the f fireworks and saw quite a few displays in, in the area. It was actually a great view up there. Um, but I did hear comments from some of the people up there that, man, this city center looks so nice, it's so clean, and that, that doesn't come without cost. Uh, we don't have a bunch of volunteers running around cleaning up and maintaining the city center. Uh, there is cost to that, and, and I think all the residents <coughs> recognize that, so um, this, Elmhurst needs to support that, uh, but again, I think we might need to look at this uh, again in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Bram. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo absent. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Fabatino? Aye. Leader? Aye. Dunn? Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That motion passes. Uh, on the committee report for bad boys trucking, conditional use. Okay, therefore the, re 
Therefore, the Development Planning and Zoning Committee recommends that the City Council approve the applicant's request for a conditional use permit for inside storage repair and servicing of motor vehicles not ancillary to a permitted use in the I-1 restricted industrial district. City Attorney is hereby directed to prepare the necessary documents for City Council approval. Unsigned by Scott M. Levin, Chair, Mark A. Mulliner, Vice Chair, and uh, signed by Mark A. Mulliner, Vice Chair, and Michael Honquist. <clears throat> Just a correction that's signed by all three. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, motion by Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Honquist. Alderman Levin. Thank you. Uh, this is actually a very straightforward. Um, Refer, a report here. Uh, we did not have the opportunity to meet as a committee last week, so we just met shortly at 6.30 this evening before this meeting to address this for the applicant. Basically, when we amended the code uh, recently, the uh, repairs of trucks in this case uh, that are not related necessarily to the property owner requires a conditional use. Um, it, it passed out of the commission unanimously. There is another on Riverside Drive, there's another similar operation there, and uh, it was very little debate. The committee strongly supports the application and the report. Okay, any questions? Alderman Bram. Thank you. Um, yeah, just one comment. I mean, I, I do have concern with having a, a committee meeting and then a report issued and on the, cons on the agenda the same evening. Um, so that's more of a process statement compared to a question. Um, it does say the applicant has submitted some comments in regards to their request. And one of those comments, since this would be a, or is being proposed as a conditional use, is, where is it here? Prohibiting from performing any vehicle maintenance or repairs outside of the building as stipulated in the lease agreement. I don't know if this was discussed at committee or maybe this is a city attorney question, but would we be stating that and mandating that all repairs and maintenance be done in this building in our subsequent ordinance if this moves forward? You would. We would, and uh, I think I also want to address, just so there's not a concern, I, I don't see that the fact that the committee <clears throat> met tonight and then put it on the agenda is being any different than if it had met last Monday and put on the agenda. We're not going to ordinance in the same night, so it's not that kind of occasion that we've faced and questioned in the past. Okay, any other questions? Alderman Bram. I guess just to clarify my process statement or concern, um, I do feel that there's a concern when the council as a whole has no idea on what is coming out of the committee that is meeting literally um, shortly before and therefore the council doesn't have if an opportunity to ask questions beforehand on the recommendation that comes out of committee so from a process that the process perspective I do think that there is a concern um, I'm not trying to belabor that but I wanted to definitely rebut the the previous statement and thank you for adding what is being stated by the applicant being in the lease into the ordinance to make sure it's mandated by our code. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, let's call the roll, please. Bram. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Absent. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Done. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. That report passes. 7-3 uh, uh, is intergovernmental agreement. Could you read the recommendation? Based on the recommendations of the Burke report, the desire to provide stormwater relief in this area of the city, it is therefore the recommendation of the Public Works and Buildings Committee that the City Council enter into an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Elmhurst and the Elmhurst Park District for the construction, operation, and maintenance of stormwater and other improvements at Golden Meadows Park. And the City's Attorney, 
and the city attorneys be directed to prepare the appropriate documents. Signed by Jim Kennedy, Chairman, Marty Deuter, Vice Chairman, Michael J. Bram, and Patrick Wagner. I need a motion. Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Deuter, for the second. Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the purpose for this report is to kind of chalk the wheels on what's been going on from an IGA standpoint. It hasn't been finalized, but what we wanted to do as a committee is to say the basic points of the IGA and everything that's been negotiated up to this point makes sense to us, the process is sound, and that when the fine points and all the, the uh, you know, I's dotted and T's crossed, once that done, that's done, they, um, the IGA will come before, before this body. And so just to highlight um, where we are, you know, the project is still the way it was. It's 12 acre feet of storage to help 20 homes and give them a 100 year level of protection. The basic IGA will be that we as a city will own and maintain the area. Um, we will be getting uh, three appraisals. We've talked about that process before. Basically, we're going to take the three, throw out the high, throw out the low, and take the one in the middle. And the way that the uh, agreement will be structured is that we will pay up to one and a half times the value of the land to the park district based on what they eventually find for um, replacement property. If it happens to be less than 1.5 times, we will pay that number. If it's in excess of one and a half times what they find, we will still only pay that 1.5 uh, number. Um, since the last time we spoke, there's been, a, uh, been discussions with the DNR. Those have been very fruitful and have followed along with what we had hoped for, and that would be that the IDNR would be good with the approach that we're taking. Um, they are now involving the National Park Service since they need to have a, uh, a voice in this. And once we get that information back, we will be going forward with ultimately the signing of the IGA and that coming before this group. Um, the one piece that was also talked about was the environmental. We gave approval to go ahead with that. Both the phase one and phase two environmental has been done. A formal report has not been written, but the preliminary results say that we're in good shape and should not require us to do any remediation on the project. So assuming we get a, an answer back from the National Park Service here in the, in the next few weeks or however long it takes a government entity to give us an answer, um, we'll be coming back to this group with a recommendation to sign the IGA and move forward with then getting the appraisals and get the project moving. So if you have any questions, if not. Thank you. Any all. questions? <clears throat> Alderman Dunn. Um, I just have uh, some comments, maybe not questions. Uh, the, uh, this particular project, uh, as I m mentioned last time, the report came before the council, started out as a, uh, a pretty, pretty nice project on a per home basis, on a cost basis. Uh, we had a nice concept on the East Lobe working with the Park District and as the design concept evolved over time, we moved from east to west. Uh, it became not dual use, uh, where we were instead buying the property outright, not buying it for the amount of the property, but uh, potentially and most likely 1.5 times the price of the property. Uh, we, it was at 14 acre feet uh, at one point, now it's at 12 acre feet. Uh, so I just at this because the the cost has escalated originally it was 2.6 million and then went to 3 3.4 million uh, but with the additional cost of the land um, you're, you're looking at some somewhere in the order of uh, 4.6 million for the whole project uh, which equates to about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars a home and uh, for, for me, that, that, that's high. I, I believe that's, that's a lot uh, to, to, to spend on a project. So I, I had concerns as a result. I'm glad uh, we're able to uh, design and build uh, some <coughs> stormwater mitigation uh, for, for these homes, but I, I do think it's, the price is high. Uh, so I, I do have concerns concerns about it as a result. Thank you. Alderman York. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to thank the committee um, for all their hard work on this and the uh, communications committee for 
just continuing to whittle away and work. I know it's been a frustrating process, um, but um, representing the fourth ward, this is huge for the people who are on Pine and Avon and, and is really gonna solve a lot of problems. And I know, um, you know they're, they're very happy about this and I'm glad to see that we're finally getting it, getting it done and getting closer. I mean, we're not there yet because we don't have the agreement, but um, I think it's a good idea to kind of bring it out in the fashion that you guys have. I think it's great. Um, you know, the only thing that it saddens me a little bit is that we have to talk about multiples of value here. Um, I just think that that's not good. And I'm going to leave it at that and uh, say thank you for all your efforts. And we look forward to getting the IG in front of us and signed and done. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Healy. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to start by saying I support the agreement and I'm going to vote for it. However, uh, like Alderman York, I find it very distasteful that we have to buy taxpayer land. And that's basically what this is. We are having to pay, not only pay for it, pay a multiple, pay more than it's worth for land that the taxpayer already owns. It's a shame it's come to this, um, but it is what it is. I agree that it provides relief to a, you know, a, a, a very uh, hard hit area. So for that reason, and, and I don't think we can do much else, I will support it. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Graham. Aye. Belumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Toledo. Absent. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. No. We have 12 ayes, one nays, and one absent. 12 ayes, one nay, and one absent. The report passes. Uh, on to reports and recommendations. Uh, there's none from the mayor at this time, so I'm gonna ask the city manager if you have some. Thank you, I, thank you. I have three items. Uh, one's on behalf of Mayor Morley, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he wanted me to let everyone know that the Senior Commission is accepting nominations for the Outstand <coughs> Outstanding Senior Citizen Service Awards. Uh, that form is on the city website along with a description of uh, um, uh, how you would apply. I know this is a very hardworking group of volunteers and uh, he, um, he f wholeheartedly supports this and anyone uh, in the community that has someone who they feel deserves uh, this, please don't be bashful. Uh, second item, at your, uh, at your desk uh, position tonight, I put some information about the uh, six month test for the Fly Quiet program. Uh, I tried to highlight um, the dates, the weeks that um, Elmhurst would see increased traffic in the evening. Keep in mind this Fly Quiet program is a runway rotation program uh, from 10 o'clock in the evening until 5.30 in the morning. Um, and so rather than uh, continually going east-west, the uh, uh, FAA, the City of Chicago, O'Hare, ONCC wanted to try a six-month test of rotating that. Uh, so you have information there. It starts tomorrow, uh, July 6th, and uh, we will be putting information on the website uh, regarding that, uh, particularly where people can register complaints uh, if they find it uh, necessary. And the last item that I have also at your uh, position or in your mailbox is the announcement of uh, putting the new uh, ladder truck into service. Uh, the fire department, Chief Anishevitz, will be hosting a ceremony uh, on Monday, July 11th at 9 o'clock at Fire Station 2. Uh, so please, if you can make it, come down, uh, see the vehicle, see the station. Uh, there'll be some refreshments as well as a, a blessing of the new truck. So please uh, make it if you can. Thank you very much. Does anyone else on the dais have a report? Alderman Bram. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, it's actually just a comment on uh, what I would not call a fly quiet program. I guess it's share the noise program. Um, thank you, city manager, for providing us with information on this and keeping us in the loop. Um, you mentioned in regards to putting on the web city's website of um, on how we would be able to provide feedback or input. Um, is that just the standard um, O'Hare Airport uh, website that is operational about 50% of the time, or is that some other information? Uh, that is a link to the City of Chicago 311 webpage uh, that they use for the noise complaints. Okay, thank you. 
Any other reports or questions? Alderman Healy. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want to give the Council and the public an update. Several weeks ago, I announced that uh, the Public Affairs and Safety Committee meeting, uh, committee would be looking at the uh, topic of arming our police with EpiPens. Um, that's obviously been a, a pretty big issue in town lately. So over the last couple of meetings, we've, we've looked at the, the uh, item. Uh, we've heard from a couple different sources, including an emergency, uh, emergency room doctor from Elmhurst Memorial. Uh, I think that initially, um, several of us, and by us I mean Alderman, because I heard from a, a few of you afterwards that thought it would be a good idea. I think initially we thought it would be something that would be easy to do, that we could get our police officers trained, so that when this particular piece of legislation that was introduced by and championed by former Fifth Ward Alderman Chris Nibo, now State Senator Chris Nibo, that we'd be ready to go the minute the law was signed. Um, as we got into it, we learned several things. First, that the, the legislation has passed the Senate and the House, and it's sitting on Governor Rauner's desk, um, and that the hopes are that the legislation will be signed soon, but we don't know when that is. Um, secondly, and, and the committee shared the cons basically two main concerns. First, from a legal perspective, from an immunity, from an um, insurance standpoint, what were the ramifications if, if one of our officers armed with an EpiPen gave a bad stick and, and what we learned from the legislation and from um, our lawyers is that the law provides uh, immunity from that except for wanton cases of, of misuse, um, you know, where just all indications are do this and, and an officer gives them an EpiPen. And, and that's true of most laws, by the way, so we weren't that concerned, but the part that, that, that caught our attention and we spent most of our time at last meeting um, was the medical consequences and, and uh, this is where the emergency room doctor from Elmer's Memorial really helped us out. There are serious ramifications for giving an EpiPen to a person that is not having an, is not having an anaphylactic shock but potentially is having a heart issue. Um, ramifications up to and including death. So that, that causes a lot of concern. Uh, part of the legislation as proposed would require that cities that wanted to give their police officers EpiPens to use would have to go through a state mandated training, state mandated by the Illinois State Police Training Board. I think I got that right. Um, so what the committee has since decided, uh, and, and um, you know, the police department obviously were very active in this conversation as were representatives from the Legere Foundation. We all agreed at last meeting that we were gonna slow things way down that we were gonna to wait to see what happened with the state law, would it be signed, and then once it was signed, let's see what the Illinois State Police Training Board put out there for the police officers to go through before we uh, gave them EpiPens. We agreed as a committee that once that happens, we would look at it again and potentially, um, and we'd, we think we'd have the flexibility to do this, add a layer of, of training on top of that in conjunction with either Elmhurst Hospital or the regional um, um, emergency EMS, emergency medical services region that, that Elmer's is, is, poss is a part of. And um, so for that reason, we're gonna back burner this issue. It's, we're still looking at it, we will still look at it, but we're not gonna keep getting after it until the law is signed and we've had a chance to take another look at it. So I wanted to make sure the council and, and the public's aware of that. It is an important issue uh, in town and, and obviously we will remain so, but um, you know, if we're gonna give our officers and first responders something uh, to use, we wanna make sure that we're comfortable giving it to them and more importantly, that they're comfortable receiving it and that they've had the training to use it. Because like I said, and, and you know, the committee members can join in, the, the doctor was pretty emphatic, emphatic. You give an EpiPen to somebody who doesn't need an EpiPen, it can cause bad things to happen. And we just don't want, you know, we don't want that to be the case. So. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but for now, we're gonna, we're gonna slow down on uh, giving our police officers that be pens to use. Any questions regarding that? Seeing none, I know Alderman Kennedy had a report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to uh, report, we as the Public Works Committee will not be meeting next Monday, the 11th. Uh, we knew we were not gonna have a quorum, so we worked ahead on agenda items, so nothing is, uh, is, is pending. We reserve the right to potentially get together before our council meeting on the 18th. There's a number of things that could come up before us, so if there is uh, an early meeting before our council, we will have that and make sure that everybody's aware of that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Alderman Healy. Uh, thank you, Alderman Kennedy, for reminding me that the Public Affairs and Safety Committee uh, will not be meeting next Monday the 11th. Uh, rather, we will be meeting on Tuesday the 12th at 5 p.m. So Public Affairs and Safety will meet next Tuesday, 5 o'clock in our normal meeting room, room three, I believe it is. Four. Four. I meant to say that. <laughs> Any other reports or recommendations? Seeing none, uh, we have one resolution that's remaining for this evening. Uh, this is a very positive resolution. This is actually the approval of the contract between the City of Elmhurst and the Public Works uh, Union. Um, very good contract for both the city and the union. It's a five-year contract, so it's very it's good for all of us, and it aligns everything up a little bit better for us. And what I need this evening is a uh, motion to uh, put this into play. Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Bram, second. Um, Alderman Kennedy, would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just very quickly, um, we have a very good relationship with the Operating Engineers Union um, that continues again with a very amicable uh, process and a five-year agreement. Uh, fair on both sides. There's always some give and take, but the agreement, I think, is uh, good for uh, we as the employer and the employees on the other side, giving them the you know, increases and the protections of what their collective bargaining agreement gives them. So I'm in full support of this, and hope the rest of us are too. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Bram. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Saludo, absent. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Conquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. This is the resolution passes. Uh, we now have an agreement between the Public Works Union in the city of Elmhurst. That's good news for the city of Elmhurst and all the people in the city. Uh, the next item is other business. Does anyone have any other business they'd like to bring up this evening? Seeing none, I need a motion to adjourn. Alderman Hanquist, Alderman York seconds. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.